In modern naval warfare, the biggest threats aren't always the biggest missiles. They're fast, cheap, numerous, and increasingly difficult to stop. Drones, loitering munitions, and high-speed cruise missiles are forcing navies to rethink ship defense. And in Japan, that rethink is now taking physical form aboard one unique ship, the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force experimental vessel JS Asuka, now hosting a 100 kilowatt class laser weapon system. Commissioned in 1995, JS Asuka was never meant to be a frontline warship. Instead, it was designed as a floating laboratory, a place where Japan could test advanced naval technologies without risking operational fleets. That mission was on full display recently with Japan's electromagnetic railgun experiments. For about eight months, the test ship Atari carried out railgun trials. On August 20th, 2025, Atari arrived at Japan Marine United's shipyard with the railgun turret and four control containers. Everything was unloaded and taken ashore, signaling the end of that test phase. But Asuka wasn't done. By late November 2025, observers noticed a new, large container loaded aboard, similar in shape to earlier test modules, but without a gun turret. In early December, when its cover was opened, something remarkable was revealed. Inside that container was a high-power laser weapon system developed by Japan's Acquisition Technology and Logistics Agency, or ATLA. At its core, a 100,000 watt, 100 kilowatt class laser. This system represents nearly seven years of research, starting in 2018 and reaching a major milestone in February 2023, when ATLA completed its 100 kilowatt laser demonstrator Ground testing confirmed the system's performance. Now, the focus has shifted to the sea. Sea trials aboard JS Asuka are expected to begin in 2026, marking Japan's first serious step toward operational shipborne laser weapons. So why is a laser such a big deal? First, cost per shot. A missile interceptor can cost hundreds of thousands or even millions of dollars. A laser shot costs little more than the electricity needed to fire it. Second, speed. Lasers travel at the speed of light. That means almost no delay between detection and engagement. Crucial against fast or maneuvering targets. Third, magazine depth. As long as the ship has power, a laser can fire again and again. No reloads, no ammunition depletion. This makes lasers ideal for countering small drones, drone swarms, mortar rounds, and potentially even high-speed missiles that threaten to overwhelm conventional defenses. But lasers aren't magic weapons. A 100 kilowatt class laser demands enormous electrical power and advanced cooling systems. Shrinking out of that into a compact ship safe module is one of the hardest engineering challenges ATLA faces. Then there's the maritime environment. Lasers are sensitive to weather, humidity, atmospheric distortion, and critically, ship movement. Keeping a laser precisely locked on on a fast-moving target while the ship pitches and rolls is no small feat. Can the system track 
aim and neutralize threats reliably under real-world conditions. Wind, vibration, reflections, and constant motion. Japan isn't alone in this race. The US Navy has already moved into operational testing. Its Odin system, a 30 kilowatt laser designed to dazzle and disable sensors, is deployed on destroyers forward based in Yokosuka. Meanwhile, the more powerful Helios laser, 60 kilowatts scalable to 120 kilowatts, can physically destroy drones, missiles, and small vessels integrated directly into the Aegis combat system. China is also entering the field. High-power laser weapons have appeared at military parades, and reports suggest shipborne and even submarine-mounted systems may be under development, though details remain unclear. In this context, Japan's 100 kilowatt laser places it squarely among the world's leading naval powers in directed energy technology. What makes this moment so important is what comes next. JS Asuka is not the end goal, it's the bridge. If these trials succeed, the technology tested here could be scaled and installed on future JMSDF surface combatants, from Mogami-class frigates to Aegis-equipped destroyers. This fits into Japan's broader defense shift. Greater resilience, reduced dependence on expensive missile inventories, and the ability to defeat high-volume, low-cost threats in the Indo-Pacific's most contested waters. With the 100 kilowatt laser aboard JS Asuka, Japan is testing more than a new weapon. It's testing a new idea of naval defense, one where energy replaces explosives and precision replaces saturation. If successful, this quite experimental ship may mark the moment Japan's navy steps fully into the age of laser warfare. And that could change the balance of the seas without firing a single missile.